I am really delighted to be here today, especially in the company of our distinguished guest. Just to save the time, I am not going to go through all the names you have heard so many times. And our students, especially the graduates, the faculty, and all the guests. As you know, I am an NRI. I was born in India, lived in India for 20 years, but I lived in United States for 50 years of my life. Most of the Indian, all of us are well-wishers of India. Sometimes we feel somehow we are hung up between here and U.S. Even though we live in U.S., we always talk about India. We come about, we like to have all the food Indians and uh, dress Indian and so on. But at the same time, we don't feel misfit when we come here. And neither we fit over there nor here. Now, either here or neither here. <laughs> I love India as place of my birth, where my forefathers are born and lived and buried. It has a spiritual connection as well as the family one. We all want to make India a better place to live for all with peace, prosperity and happiness. For many it is not, the reality is many is not. Our population is one of the largest, second largest population with 1.3 billion people. Out of it, 850 million are below the age of 35, that's our strength. We are one of the youngest nation and the growing nation. However, the tragedy is we have 300 million unemployed in this country and also there are about 500 million living below poverty line. When we say below poverty lines is two, less than two dollars a day or 120 rupees a day they earn. How can anybody imagine that this 500 million people can eat, live, take care of their families, have shelter, send their children to school and provide the medicine and welfare for their families. So it is the responsibility of all of us to see what we can do, how we can do to improve the situation. Our population is 17% of the world but our share is only 2.2% of the world trade today. There was time when our share of the trade was over 25% several centuries ago. Now it has come to 2%. And look at our GDP in per capita income. For Germany it is 44,650. But Japan is very close to it. South Korea is $25,000. India is only $3,700 per year. The reason I'm comparing with Germany, Japan, and South Korea is that after the Second World War, these countries were completely destroyed. India was still was doing fairly well at that time. We were not destroyed. We have natural resources, which is many, many times more than any of these countries. What is the difference then? President A.P. Abu Kalam said, nation is first and then individuals. I was thinking about it and I will say that without development of individuals, nation cannot be first. Let us see how we can change for a better India of tomorrow. There are many things, but I will focus on the most important one. As it has been said all during this ceremony of occasion, education and training is the key to it. And our minister, honorable minister, also emphasized it. 
Now when we talk about education and training, in Urdu we can call it Talim wa Tarbiyat. Now we go to colleges not really for the purpose of true acquisition of knowledge, but everybody wants to have some kind of certificate or the degree. And that got to change. You are here, as I have said many times, our focus has to change of the students that you are here to acquire the knowledge, share the knowledge, and apply the knowledge and create the knowledge. If we do these four things, we will be number one again. There is no question about it. Just look at it, how many of us, what we have learned can apply today, whether we are engineer or artist or whatever it is. Are we applying what we have learned? Are we creating something new? This is something to wonder about. How many Nobel Prize winners we have? How much we are competing? What is our quality of materials when we produce? That is very important. However, I will go to the JIT, what we are planning, what we like to do. As you know, we have a College of Engineering, Business and Media. Inshallah, this year we will start Arts College with BA, BCom, BBA to complement our MBA program and these are very essential uh, parts of uh, uh, society. And also next year we like to start College of Education with the B. Ed. and D. Ed. program, both the program inshallah. And one unique thing which we have already signed the agreement and we are planning to start is Innovation and Entrepreneur Development Center, Innovation and Entrepreneur Center. Our students have the ideas. I remember very well uh, last year one of the girl students who wrote her final year papers and it was based on how to charge the cell phone without electricity. But what happened? It got lost. There is nobody, there is no mechanism to take these ideas and put into the practice. And it is very common in all major universities in Europe and America that they have these centers. And inshallah we will start that center this year in GIT. And the second is we will also start incubation center which uh, our Honorable Minister was talking about that to take the ideas and put it to the practice. We will have the people with the expertise and experience guide them and even provide some financial assistance to make a prototype. So these are the things we will start within uh, two years. And I, inshallah, I'd like to see GIT become a university by 2022. Whether I'm here or not, March will go on. I'd like to invite everyone the student, faculty, and the guest. to make sure it happens. However, innovation is not easy. It takes a lot of commitment and a lot of work. When we talk about the innovation, we must have passion and creativity. A lot of time we are lacking these things because I do not see passion in the sense that if you want something, you go after it. Then only it happens. Passion and creativity. Steve Jobs, the founder of the Apple, says, 
one percent is inspiration and 99 percent is perspiration that is your sweat and blood you put into it 99 percent medical we are lacking in perfection whether we are doing cleaning work whether it's a janitorial work or even small things which we make it always bothered me that when i see that everyone around the world when we look at the japan germany and and south korea they started with nothing 70 years ago look at the automobile we want everybody wants german car whether it's a mercedes or bmw or vw why it's just the quality second comes japan if you look at it everybody wants honda volkswagen i'm, I'm sorry honda toyota mitsubishi nissan you name it and we still stuck with that old ambassador why when we can go to the space why can't we create a small things like this this is something we all have to contemplate think about it and work hard and without that it will not be possible to achieve what we want to achieve and at the end i would say a couple of things one is our system in the society it has to be just adult justice justice freedom equality and that's what islam came for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam worked all his life for it and that's how islam spread and gave the message and also proved to the world that if you stick to your message and work hard what you can achieve your history is your evidence what you have achieved in science and technology and architect and remember the last thing is like morana said we have two responsibility to get to closer to our creator that is hukullah that is the right of god that we worship we take care of things the way it is prescribed which we are not doing at this point most of the muslims are not and the second thing is hukul ibad our responsibility towards the humanity if we work hard we will succeed and we will be peaceful when we leave this world we will be answerable to almighty one day thank you